Welcome to the Holy Spirit's Curriculum of Joy podcast. My name is Wanaka Oberhuber, and I'm your host. Today, my guest is Richard Dale Lodi. Welcome. Well, hi, Wanaka. Nice to have you here, Richard. And oh, nice I'm to very, be here. I'm very pleased you you contacted me after a long time. We had spoken of having a podcast and we never got to it, right? And now you contacted me because you have a new book out there. And so I'm very pleased to talk about it with you. Well, good. Before, before we go into the book, I'd like to ask you, how did you get to know A Course in Miracles and what has that um, changed you? How has it changed your life to accept these ideas and apply them to your life? Well, it was a real unusual way uh, the, uh, that I discovered A Course in Miracles. Uh, I was into reading a lot of different uh, religions and a lot of different spiritual ideas, and I was a uh, I was really what I would think of as a person searching. And uh, uh, I had a grandson that uh, had uh, soccer games in Minneapolis. And uh, I would stop at a bookstore there. Uh, Actually, it was a half-price bookstore. And uh, one time while I was looking, I saw up on the top shelf, I was a course in miracles in three different books and uh, they wanted ten dollars for each book and I thought you know that's a little high so I passed up that opportunity well it was one year later when when uh, my grandson had another soccer game a tournament uh, that I stopped at that same bookstore again and uh, there it was on the top shelf only this time there was a rubber band wrapped around those three books and it was ten dollars for all three books so uh (laughs) being as curt conservative as i am i thought that was a good idea i had not heard of a course in miracles i had not i did not know what it was at all and uh, I just uh, bought the book and I started reading it, the three books actually, and I started reading them and I was intrigued. And uh, I just kept reading them and uh, I bought other books about the Course in Miracles, um, uh, the two books called The Companion to the Course in Miracles. And uh, I just devoted an enormous amount of time in reading it and understanding it. And then I started writing books about it. This all happened over a period, I would say, of about 10 years. So uh, that that's how I got involved. It's just everything in that book seemed so true. It just struck my heart. And... Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to know everything that I could know about it. And so that's where I'm at in my life right now, Annika. Yeah, beautiful. And how have those ideas changed your perspective on life? Oh, it would, it would take just hours, just hours and hours to uh, talk about how how it changed my perspective. It it just changed everything. Um, I uh, I had been a Christian um, you know, mo- most of my life, and really really dedicated Christian too. And uh, it changed my my perspective on that, broadening it broadening it so much. Um, I had a perspective where, where you know, you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and uh, uh, that was pretty pretty much the extent of it. And you try to live like Jesus would live, and um, now, now I know, and I understand that you don't 
try to live like Jesus, what you do is you accept, you exchange your life, you know, your life for the life of Christ or the life of the Holy Spirit. So it's an exchange. You aren't, I am not trying to to be anything. I'm knowing that I am something. You know, I am the child of God, pure, perfect, holy, uh, without blemish. And there's no way that I can change that. I'm not like a Christian now in which I'm a sinner, you know, and and I have to I have to always think of myself as a sinner, you know, somebody saved by grace and every day or every month or every some some churches every day, you know, have to take communion, admit their sins and how they failed and there's not that in my life anymore. I mean, I might make a mistake. Sure, I might be selfish at times, seem like I'm selfish. But then I realize, hey, that was me. That's part of the dream. That's not part of the. That's not part of the real me that was created as in God's image. And uh, I just dust myself off a little bit and go on with life and and live and learn and. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful life. I, I get along with other people so much better. Uh, I realize their mistakes uh, and my mistakes, and, and it, it's just a game I'm playing. It, it's a dream. It's just a dream. Like, like the Course in Miracles said, your life is a dream. And... Uh, uh, my my new book explains it as a dream too. Not right now. Instead of living, like right now, instead of living as as this person that you know has has been. Uh, what would I say? This person that has become a sinner. I'm living as this. I'm I'm living as the Christ that is holy. And uh, in psychology, you live what you believe you are. And uh, if you believe you're a sinner, you're fighting not to be a sinner. You're going to be a sinner no matter how much you're fighting not to be it. But when you know yourself as the Christ, when you know yourself as, as God itself, there's power in that. Uh, there, there's not power when you believe you're you're a sinner and and uh, um, there's power when you believe you're the holy son of God that you're not a body as it says in the Course in Miracles that you're a spirit and I'm probably talking a little bit too much here, Wanaka, and repeating myself, but that's okay. You know that that's me. I'm ex trying to explain the unexplainable yeah no i like the the way you're describing the difference to your previous understanding of christianity and how how you see people struggling with that right because when they believe they are sinners and have to go repent and get ablution or um, sustenance through jesus christ they are they are always believing they're sinners, right? And that doesn't go away, you're saying. So the, the question is, how can we move on from there into a Christian perspective where you are holy? Because I believe that the idea of being washed, the sin being washed away, right, is not is saying that you can actually be that the Christ. Because once you're washed, when it, once the sins are washed away, how could you sin anymore? But in the first place, according to A Course in Miracles, the sins never happened. And errors are immediately corrected once you allow them to be. So I think that's a really, really beautiful thing. 
to talk about this. I love the way you describe how that has changed in your life. What, what I understand now is that uh, I really never have sinned in, in uh, uh, God's eyes, that uh, he created me and others, not just me, but others as perfect, pure, holy sons of God or daughters, if you wanted to add that, but in the of course, in the course, when it's speaking of sons, it's speaking of male and female. Uh, uh, it doesn't make a distinction there. He is everyone else. But when I, but I have never ever sinned. I was been created perfect, and uh, uh, that's the way I will always be. I can never be otherwise, but back maybe a millennium ago, I don't know, but way back at one time, the Course says, I had a wild idea. What would it be like if I could be separate from my creator or my source? And at that instant, I went into a complete dream I went into what I call a virtual reality. And uh, this is what I'm living in now. I'm still perfect, pure, holy spirit, image of God, his son, pure, holy. But I went into this dream. And this dream that I'm living in is... uh, is what it would be like if I was separated from God. But now, within this dream, I realize that I am dreaming. And I realize that I will awaken. Once I'm living in this dream from my holiness and have learned what it would be a lot, what it's like to be away from this holiness. And uh, even as a Christian, even as a Christian, it was not really nice, you know, living in this dream. I, of course, I didn't realize it was a dream as a Christian either, but everything was so real and so serious and and uh, when other kids, I have to laugh when other people would uh, uh, disrespect me, you know, or 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 do something like maybe steal from me, or some of the things people just do uh, because we have a selfish nature, you know, it within this dream, then it would be so serious, you know, I would dislike them maybe even resent them. And uh, uh, it seemed like my wife and I, we got along pretty well when I was a Christian too, but it's so much different now. I mean, she can do what she wants and and uh, uh, I, I um, don't, I don't, I'm not demanding like, like I was before. As a Christian, I was still still demanding, but uh, it's so pointless. It's so pointless to be demanding. It's just, it's just, it's just dumb. It, life is so much nicer when you let it roll and, and you realize that this is a dream. And when some people do something that maybe you don't like, um, you take it as a learning experience. You you sort you say sort of and think sort of like uh, well they don't know any better and and you you, you let it go you know it's kind of like Jesus I remember that the, when Jesus was going to the cross he said forgive them for they know not what they do and uh, that's so obvious now. Uh, when people are doing things counter 
to to what's productive when they're doing selfish things when they're when they're hurting other people to gain themselves that's so foolish i mean they do not know what they're doing but uh, i remember one time i said to a person too well just let him let him be he doesn't know what he's doing this person says he knows exactly what he's doing so see that's the difference in understanding they really don't know what they're doing because if if a person knows what he's doing he will do he or she will do you know as exactly what the holy spirit or god wants them to do because what God wants you to do, what the Holy Spirit wants you to do, is the absolute best thing for you. Because the Holy Spirit, or the universal life, I call it in my book, knows exactly what's best for you. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to give you. And... Uh, if you're rejecting this and you're saying, oh, I don't want that or I won't want this and you think you know better, well, that's part of the problem. That's not going to get you out of this dream when when you pass, when you die, when, when the body dies. Nobody ever dies. That's so obvious to me now. Nobody ever dies. It's impossible to die. You're going to hang around, you know, and from, go from one dream to another dream until you get it right. And then you're going to wake up exactly like you've always been. I think the, whole, I think the Course in Miracles says you wake up in the arms, arms of your mother. It's like you're dreaming, and then you wake up in the arms of your mother. Uh, and, and, and that's the way it will be. One day when I get this completely right in this life, it'd be nice if it was in this life. But if I have to go to another dream and another one, that's the way it'll be. But right now, I want to do it right, Lonica. I want to do it right. I want to have it right. When I say I want to have it right, I mean I want my thinking right. I want my thinking exactly like God's thinking. And that's when the game is over. That's when the dream will be over. That's when that's when I'll be living in the real world. Right now I can pretty well see the real world. But uh I still slip a little bit. I haven't grown quite enough. And uh, I haven't learned quite enough. But uh, the day will come when all of a sudden, boom, just like the big bang, you know, when everything went out, that there'll be another kind of like a big bang in reverse and everything comes together. In fact, that's happening already. It seems like a long period of time for me, but it's going to be, it's like an instant, you know, where there is no time. Outside of our experiences in the five senses, there's the real reality. We're living in a virtual reality. We're living in a we're we're living in a dream right now. But uh eventually we'll be outside of this dream and uh we'll we'll we we're one with the Father already, but we're sleeping. And we'll wake up and we'll realize and we're going to say, wow, that was one, excuse my language, but we're going to say, that was one hell of a dream. And uh, it is kind of a hell right here until, until you realize you're the holy, perfect, wonderful son of God that just happened to be sleeping. When you realize that, boy, life just keeps getting better and better and better and better. And uh, 
I, I, I love it, Lana. I, I love my life. I wake up in the morning. It's, I wonder, I wonder how am I going to enjoy it all? I'm, I have, I don't know of anything I don't have. Uh, not not just materially, but but psychologically, I it's it's wonderful. Um, I, I call it paradise. I I don't understand anymore the Christians that are always they were always talking about carrying their cross. You know, carrying your cross. I have no cross to bear, even in Christianity. Why, why, was, why were we ever thinking about carrying a cross? Isn't that what Jesus did for us? Didn't Jesus carry the cross in the New Testament for us? Why would we pick up a cross and carry it? I mean, to me now, as a... As a a student of A Course in Miracles, I see that a slap, a slap in Jesus' face, you know, uh, thinking that we have to not have to carry a cross when, when he uh, uh, died for us. I, I want to I emphasize something here too, Monica. My whole concept of that cross has changed. Jesus never died because we were such sinners I, and, and we needed a savior. Jesus died because our minds were messed up. Um, he, uh, in, in those days, this comes so clear to me and nobody's told me, but I know this is true. Um, God, the Jews, Jesus came primarily for the Jews, and then Paul expanded it after Jesus' death to cover, to cover everybody in the world, according to Christianity, that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you know, uh, otherwise... Uh, Otherwise, you die and go to hell. And But if you accept him as your personal savior, then those people go to heaven and there's no other way. And, and it's sort of right because the only way to salvation is to make an exchange of your personal self for the Christ self or for the, for the God self. I don't like to call it Christ because you can be in any religion and if you exchange your personal self for the God self and you live as the God self, as you live the way you were created according to Genesis, you know, in the image of God, perfect, pure, holy, sinless, uh, and, and, and live that way. That can be in any religion, whether you want to call it the Christ consciousness, the Buddha consciousness, the Shiva consciousness, anything like that. But, uh, but here's what happened. According to the Jewish religion, they were killing all these animals, you know, like, like God wanted blood sacrifices, killing all these animals. And then Jesus come and he said, no. He said, These, that's not necessary. Um, but people couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. They were so, they had such an idea and fear that uh, God never, ever wanted blood sacrifice. It's not ever, ever could he want that. I know that now. You know, I know that now. My God, I understand him, her, it. I understand the love. And uh, there's no way God ever wanted blood sacrifices. But people were so convinced in their ignorance of God that they thought he did, and they could never get past that. For, so Jesus comes along for the Jews, just the Jews, 
And he said, no. He said, I'm the, now I'm the perfect lamb to be suffered. And people believed it. And myself as a Christian, I believed it. And as a Christian, it helped me to believe it because now my sins were kind of gone, you know, and now I could live and I could be saved and go to heaven while everybody else was going to hell. But no, 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 as a Christian, I had it wrong. Um, God never, ever, not, not ever wanted any blood sacrifices. Uh, and, and Jesus explained it well. He explained it well in the parable of the prodigal son. When the prodigal son came back to God, uh, to the father, the father didn't say, oh, you're such a sinner. Now, how are we going to make the sacrifice? No, the father threw his arms around the son. The son said, let me be a servant. That's how messed up the son was thought his father would make him a servant. And his father says, no, kill the fatted lamb. We're going to party. My son was lost. In Christianity, I was still lost, Monica. I was still lost. But I had my religion. Everybody wants their religion. You know, the Course in Miracles is not a religion. It's a whole education. It's a whole... It's a whole different mindset. And uh, sometimes I wonder when I talk to people, you know, who, who understands this? Who understands this? Um, my wife, the most wonderful person in the whole world. You no, know, the most wonderful person in the whole world. A Christian almost from birth, a churchgoer in social groups, loved by people in the family. Not this understanding, though. Not this understanding. Um, I feel like, I don't want to say this in a derogatory way. I don't mean it derogatory. But if you can imagine a human being you know, being dropped onto an island where there were just gorillas and he had to live amongst the gorillas. That's what I feel like. I know that's a homely illustration, but you can't take, you can't teach a gorilla ethics or to read and write. They do not have the consciousness for that. And uh, the people in the world do not have the consciousness right now to live the way God, the way God would like to have them think and live. And the Course in Miracles changes that. It, it will, the Course in Miracles gets you back to where you always were. You know, you have this mind of God, but you wondered what would it be like if I was separated from this mind of God, and that's where we're at right now. That's where we're at right now. And this is this this is in my book if people want to see it. You know, the the if, if they want to see it, if they want to the, but they need the consciousness. They need the consciousness to understand it. It's like it's like if you took a gorilla and you took the mind of a human being and you put it into that gorilla, that gorilla would have to have the mind of a human being. You know, before it could understand anything, it can't have the mind of a gorilla and understand a human being, you know, to, have to understand art, to understand poetry. A gorilla could not, cannot do that. It doesn't have the consciousness for it. And human beings, they don't have the consciousness 
uh, they don't have the consciousness to to really understand God. A human being wants to make sacrifices, you know, because this God is so great and they're so little. It's at least Christianity was like that, this big God and these little people worshiping this big God. And it's not like that. It's not like that. The, the human being with the right consciousness is exactly like God. You have you just have to change your your human gorilla consciousness for the God consciousness. It has to be an exchange. You can't keep your personhood and still live like God. You cannot live like God. You have to know that you are God, but that you're dreaming. And within this dream, then you'll learn to live like God. For instance, I know I'm dreaming. I know I'm dreaming. And I'm watching myself dream. Right now I'm sitting in my chair and my wife is upstairs and you're on your recorder it's just one, one, one big fun dream. If anything comes out of it, wonderful. If somebody buys a book and wants to learn what I learned from this book, and they can learn it. You know, the, the Course in Miracles, that's a wonderful book. Well, it's three books, and now it's five books all put into one. But... Uh, uh, you can learn it from the Course in Miracles, but why not buy my book? My book, it's only, I think it's only 1,500 words, I believe, or maybe it's, 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 it's very short. It's 100 and, 138 pages, and most of those pages are just half pages. Very, very easy to read. Very easy. But the thing is, I'm, I'm trying to get it into an audio book right now. In fact, I just submitted it as an audio book yesterday. So it's, it's, it's under approval. But you could read the whole book in probably two or three hours. But I I keep reading it. I mean, it's my book. It's the first. It's the first fifty lessons in the Course in Miracles, but incorporated into those first fifty lessons, you know, is the whole course. And uh, uh, it, it it's so simple, and it's so. It was given to me by God. There's no way I could have written it. You know, like what I'm saying right now, there's no way I could have come up with this this stuff on my own. I mean, I'm talking here, and it's not me talking. It can't be me talking, not me the person. I could never talk like this. But But now I have the mind of Christ. I'm not trying to be like anybody. You know... Jesus, I would say, is like my hero now, but but I I I just needed to, the the salvation is the salvation is getting rid of all the illusions that I had. That was my salvation. I didn't need a blood sacrifice, you know, somebody to die on a cross so I could live. That is just that is just I, I I just believed garbage. That's what I believed when I was a Christian. And I was so convinced that this that my Christianity was right and correct that I thought I had to go into the whole world, you know, and convince them. Otherwise you know, they were going to die because they didn't accept this blood sacrifice. And God demands a blood sacrifice. 
If you don't accept this blood sacrifice, then you aren't saved. I do not know how Christ's teachings could have gotten so screwed up in my mind. I just can't believe it. And I, 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 through the course, I understand this. The course is just a lesson. It, 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 it teaches us how to be what we are. We don't need any religion. We just need to exchange the, our personal life for the life of Christ. Jesus, I know now, Jesus taught that he was the Christ. And that's the only way to God is to be the Christ. And uh, I, am, I was Richard the person. And now I'm Richard the Christ. And that's the only way to be Richard the Christ or Richard the Buddha or Richard the Shiva, whatever you want to call it. You know, you can call it by any name you want. Like in my book, I say you can't really give it a name. So in the book, I call it the universal life. But boy, would my Christian friends, some of them really regret calling God an it. You know, God is not an it. You know, boy, this, that, was, that was me. You know, that was me. Years ago, boy, if anybody called God an it, oh boy, would I be offended. But God's not a person. God's not a person. You know, God, God isn't a man. God isn't a woman. I don't know what to call it except an it or a spirit. Um, um, it, uh, it, uh, <laughs> to, call, to call God a he or a she is really total ignorance because to be a he or a she, I mean, you would have to have testicles or a vagina to be a he or a she. I don't think you're going to find that 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 in God. So so God is an it. It's it, God God is a wonderful it. God is love. God is joy. God is peace. You know, that that is <laughs> that's what God is. God is God is a, a mind. God is a uh, 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 God is a wonderful mind, a mind that wants the best for everyone. God is, we walk and talk and breathe in God. And uh, um, I like to think of God as air. I mean, I, I, but they, people, people, they don't get it. They don't get it. Um, air, air, it's all around us. We breathe in this air. It goes through our blood and it goes through every cell of our body. And we never even think about it. We breathe it in and we live in it. It lives in us. And it, we never even think about it. And that's the way we, most people and myself, even when I was a Christian, thought of God. We, we thought of God as some, somebody we pray to. We pray to, we worship. We go to church, we get on our knees and we worship. And God isn't like that at all. God is like the air. God is like the air. We live and we breathe and we have our being in God. God is us. We are God. And uh, that's, that's the way it is. And God is. And uh, I know this now. I know this now. I, um, it, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful life. It's just wonderful. Um, there's no, there's no effort in it. There's no effort in it. 
it's it it's peaceful. It's joyful. I um, I I could say more, but I guess maybe it's time to let you ask another question, Juanica. Yeah, it's a very illustrative way of putting the whole thing, because this idea of the the apes or the the, the gorilla and the the human, and, the, and when you accept the atonement for yourself, you are you become so to speak you are exchanging or you're letting go of your previous idea of who you are. So if you think you are the gorilla, you experience things that way, right? And when you change your mind about that with spirit, you are yeah, the opposite, something totally different, right? And that's what you're describing, I think, that your life has changed from one view of yourself to, to one in which you are gloriously happy uh, yes that um that is exactly that that is exactly uh if you put a human being you know in a gorilla suit you know in a gorilla's life that would be, to me that's the best in illustration uh if if you put it on the the worldly thing uh, we're God, we're God in a human being suit. And uh, uh, we've sort of forgotten that. We've forgotten that we're, we're God. We've forgotten that. We're not the human being. We're just God in a human being suit. And I call that a virtual reality. We're just God living in a virtual re human reality. We live through the five senses now, and our world is what we can experience through the five senses. And the five senses only experience five parts of reality. I mean, when when we're living in the human suit and we think we're the human being instead of God, uh, boy, we have really, we have really, we have really uh we're really trying to believe we're separate from god and that we aren't god by only experiencing through our five our mind and our five senses i mean uh we we made we made our mind our brain i'm going to say our brain we made our brain and our body interacting with each other to experience only five percent five cents is five percent of the whole reality that's out there so we're not getting the picture of reality at all the real world is the hundred percent it's the it's if we could if we could experience everything that's outside of what we experience through the five senses with what we've experienced through the five senses, then we would have the real world. We would know the real world. See, the real world is like a million piece puzzle. <laughs> we've got five pieces, Monica. We've got only five pieces. And we say that, that we experience through our five senses, and we say, and then we say, I live in the real world. I've heard people say, we have no idea what the real world is, not through our five senses in our brain, but sometimes through meditation, people can get a hint. You know, of what's outside of the five senses. They can get a hint of it. Uh, because you get that brain quieted, you know, in meditation. And you start experiencing what you don't or what you can't experience through the five senses. And then you start experiencing the spiritual. And I think that's what's happening with me. I mean... There's been an exchange 
I don't want to be a human being anymore. I mean, I don't want to be a gorilla, right? Now I'm in this dream. I have to live as a human being. I'm still in the dream, but I'm awake in this dream. And I don't want to hate. I don't want to be mad at anybody. I don't want to be... I don't want to be demanding. I don't want to be in any of this stupid stuff that human beings do and think they're smart when they do it. I don't want to do that stuff anymore. And, uh, uh, you know, here, here's the thing, Wanaka. When I was a Christian, when I was a Christian, um, you know, I thought I was doing something for God. You know, I was I was trying to be good for God. That's the way God wanted me. You know, oh boy, you know, I really, oh man, that neighbor's wife. You know, oh geez, my wow. But I'm not gonna go for the neighbor's wife because the Ten Commandments say, "Thou shalt not commit adultery," or, or I might say. You know, I might say something like, boy, you know, I'd really like to envy that neighbor's house or job. And, and uh, but, uh, you know, I got to obey those Ten Commandments. Um, my, my wants and desires, they really weren't the same, you know, as God's. But now, and see, now I understand what foolishness that is. What foolishness that is. I mean, why, why, why would, why would I want any of that, that dumb stuff when I can have a mind of God and live in peace without even trying? I mean, it's still so dumb. Um, See, here's the thing. I think here's the Course in Miracles says it, it basically wastes time. It doesn't have any consequences. It just wastes time, right? Well, it's not only a waste of time, but it's 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 a waste of, it's it's so it's it, it's it's so counter to to what God wants. It's so God. See, here's where here we here's where we make a big mistake. We we think God is kind of like us, you know. When I think about how I used to worship, I, sometimes I would be on my knees, you know, and uh, um, and I, I would call this worshiping God. You know, He's the Majesty. He's the uh, God is God is this great thing, you know. He's just this great thing, and yeah, okay, okay, okay. I guess it it, it is, but but God isn't thinking that way. God isn't thinking that way. God, you know, God, God doesn't want you on your knees to Him. He wants you to be His friend. He wants you to think like he does. He wants you to be like a son. He wants you to be like a part of him. Um, you know, what true worship is, and this is the only worship there is, and this is the only true worship of God, that's when you want to be exactly like God. You want to be God. You want not be God in the sense that, you know, you're controlling everybody and have power over everybody, but you want to, you get, but you have to understand that God is love. You have to understand that. And then you need to want to be like that. And, uh, well, that's, that's what you are. I mean, in order to be like that, you have to understand that you are that. And that's what happened. That's what happened. I like the way the Course in Miracles explains that. It said we had this wild idea, and then we went into a sleep. 
And uh, th this is what we got. This, this is our lesson. This is what it's like. You know, when you don't know that you're God, when you, when you think you're, sep you're a separate from God, that you're a person, and uh, that God is out there and you're supposed to be worshiping him and that type of thing. God doesn't want you on your knees. God doesn't want you begging. God was, don't want, doesn't you please this and please that. And, oh, God, I'm so needy. Oh, I'm such a sinner. <clears throat> I'm just such a sinner. Oh, thank you. I've been saved by grace. Uh, that's, that's farce. That's a farce. I understand that now. That that that's that's the devil coming like an angel of light when he convinces people of that stuff. You 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 you're as good as what God was, but but you fell asleep, and this is your dream. So 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 be what you were before the dream. That's what you really are. Um, you, you, you aren't, we really, I'm so glad I know this because now it's given me power. I can live like this. Some, somebody, somebody does me an injustice. They aren't, they aren't a sinner that I have to be mad at. I have to, I, I have to, if they're not that way, it doesn't even happen. They're just poor and I don't mean it derogatory, but they're just poor, uninformed uh, children is what they are. When, when, when they do wrong, they're just children. I mean, just, but, but they're not children exactly either because they're not exactly children. It's, a, it's a unexplainable. It really is. But read the course. But, you know, if the Course is the fastest way. You know, the Course doesn't claim to be the only way. I think there's many ways. But, but the Course says it's the fastest way. And I believe the Course. I believe it's the fastest way. You have to have this mind of Christ. You have to think the way God thinks. I, I, and I'm I, and I'm close. This might be my last dream, and I'm trying to I'm, I'm I'm working and trying to have it be my last dream. Not like not like like I'm working digging a ditch or anything like that. I'm working I'm working in in joyfully. I'm loving what I'm doing. Like what. Like I used to tell the kids when I was a guidance counselor, they'd wonder what job they should have. You know, they always considered what money they would be making and stuff like that. And, and But I, I, what I would say, think about what you enjoy doing and then go for that because a person that enjoys their job will never work a day in their life. And that's the way I am with the Course in the Miracles. I will study the Course in Miracles. I will work at the Course in Miracles. I write books about the Course in Miracles. I'll talk to anybody that will listen. Um, uh, and But I'm not working a day in my life. I'm not working one minute. Right now I'm talking to you. Uh, I, I skipped a whole night finishing this book. I I uh, I was uh, on this audio book. Now um, I think I, I uh, it was Saturday anyway. I don't know, but I went about 48 hours at least completing the the audio of the book. And I was not even tired after that 48 hours. I finished it. I wanted to get it done. Uh, the, I went I went and walked, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, a two, I walk about two miles every day just, just for fun. I enjoy walking. This, 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 is, this is my body, you know, that I'm in. 
and uh, uh, I, I, I want to treat it good. It's not me, but uh, this, this is my vehicle that I'm in in this dream. And I enjoy walking. I enjoy keeping it fit. You know, I enjoy, I, I enjoy my good health. I'm in very good health, very good health. And, uh, and uh, I enjoy it. But you don't, you don't just get good health because you want good health and then live on potato chips and candy bars, that doesn't work. You have to have the right mind. You have to learn how to enjoy salads, and you have to learn how to enjoy certain types of meat. You have to you develop taste, not because, not, not because you're trying to please God, but you do it because you're... You, 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 you do it because that's just the way it, you know that's the way it should be and that's the way you want it the way it the way it should be here's one what I've learned <sighs> boy I, have, I heard so many times I've heard in church I've heard the pastor various pastors I still go to church every Sunday my wife, She's a traditional Christian, and I go to church every Sunday, and I don't know how many people I've heard three pastors spell the word joy, and they say that's what Christianity is. It's joy, and then they say J is for Jesus first. O is for others second. Y is for yourself last. And that's joy, or that's Christianity. What a farce. What a bunch of BS. Uh, it can never happen. It can never happen that way. It's, it's wrong. I like to tell people I am the selfiest, selfiest person in the world. There's nobody more selfish than I am. I think only of myself, only of myself. And that's the way everybody is in this dream. But here's the difference. What is myself? What is myself? Myself is everyone. Myself is the whole world. Myself is God, and so when 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 you're that mind, when you're God, then you're you want the best interest for everybody, because you know that's the best interest for yourself. It's all about doing what's best for yourself. That's the only way it will ever be unless you're kidding yourself, unless you're faking it. You know, there's people, there's Christians, oh, I think of the other person, you know, oh, God, I'll put them ahead of me. You know, it's, 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 it's others first, and, and then they're, they're so screwed up. They're so, they're, they're so, they're so unpredictable. They're, they're so, they're so unloving. You have to, your yourself has to be first. You have to know that you are God. You have to know that you are God manifested, happens to be in this dream or manifested into this flesh or into this virtual reality suit. And then when you know that, then you know everybody else is that way. Wanako is God. No doubt about it. Just God. There's no doubt about that. Hitler was God. Only Wanako has a more understanding of what God is than what Hitler did. You know, Hitler, too, in his own sick mind, he probably thought he was right. 
He was trying to create a super race. He was going to create a wonderful world. All he did was destroy everything and do horrible atrocities. But that's what everybody has a sick mind. Not to the degree Hitler did, but everybody has a sick mind. And that's what we need to be saved from. But it won't happen, you know, through blood sacrifices and... and uh, Oh, excuse me. I, you know, I would have hated myself and I would have never wanted to talk to myself, you know, before I had this understanding, but it's all BS. It's all BS. It's, it's BS. It's Satan. It's Satan in, in religions. Not that there's a real Satan either. I'm not saying that, but you got to use some kind of terminology, you know, <clears throat> Satan would just be Satan would just be living, you know, in the flesh selfishly, uh, without knowledge of God at all. You know, that that's I suppose that <clears throat> that's what Satan is. I I don't know. There's no there's no there's there's nothing like a evil spirit. There's nothing like that. There's just there's just God and God is good. But if your understanding isn't right, then there seems to be, you know, what you would call evil. It just, but it's just messed up. It's just messed up. This dream is messed up. We're here because we're messed up. If we weren't messed up, we wouldn't be here. And uh, uh, that's the real world. The real world is, is a world without illusion. It's out without illusion. The real world doesn't have evil. And uh, the real world is paradise. And uh, Wanaka, that's where I'm living right now. That's where I'm living right now. Man, I would like everybody, I would like everybody to have this mind. I would, I would, but they don't want it. They don't want it. They want to be religious. You know, they want to have their religion. They want to worship their God. They want to, I don't know, they, they don't want to be God. They don't want to live, they don't want to live as God, but they want to worship a God. And and uh, I don't know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a beggar. I don't know what it's like, but, uh, but uh, if, if, if if you understand God, everything comes is is going to come to you naturally. I think that's what's happened in my life. I mean, everything's coming to me naturally. I um, God, I can't believe it. My card's hard for me to believe my life. It's so good. Um, man, I'm sitting in this chair and lazy boy chair in my nice little home. I'm talking to a wonderful man that that's uh, uh, trying to do good in the world, you know, through uh, the Holy Spirit of joy. Boy, that's another thing, the Holy Spirit of joy. Does that describe my book? I don't need money. I have plenty of money. I have a retirement you know, I'm not a wealthy millionaire or anything like that, but I got good retirements uh, coming in and and um, Social Security. And my wife gets Social Security, but she's still working. So, I mean, we we have no need of money. If I don't have to sell a book, Wanaco. But uh, I've worked tremendous amount of but tremendous amount of time, and that's not my only book. I have about thirty books, but 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 life is but a dream, a pathway into the miraculous. Yeah, why that, don't you talk a little bit about your um, the idea of miracles? Because you you have the miraculous in that book, and, I, and maybe you'd like to explain to our listeners a little bit about the miraculous. 
The Miraculous. Okay. I, um, the, the book is actually in five parts, and uh, it, it starts uh, the first five, the first ten lessons are from the Course in Miracles. So uh, the, the, the Course in Miracles is definitely, you know, is, is definitely the prime subject. Everything in this book is maybe worded differently, but it, it's from the Course in Miracles. I like to think of the first 10 lessons as an introduction into the miraculous, and then the next 10, there's 50, the first 50, and then the next 10 is exploring the miraculous. And then there's practicing the miraculous, and then there's there's a living the miraculous, and then there's becoming the miraculous. And uh, uh, people that people that are really uh, I like to call them veterans of the course, well read in the course, you know, could even could even start with lesson thirty, uh, where it would be living living or I call it idea 30, which would be living the miraculous. And then the last 10 are becoming the miraculous. That's where, that's where you realize where, where you're at. You, you become the miraculous, for instance. I believe that's where I'm at, you know, unless I'm sadly mistaken and deceived, like is always possible. I always have to be careful, you know, that I'm not, deceiving myself, but I believe I've become the miraculous. I really, I don't know, this, this, can't, this has to be, this has to be the universal life talking through me. This cannot be Richard Lodi talking. It cannot be. I know it cannot be because I couldn't have developed from my what's called my call my body mind in my book my body mind my body mind is is when my my heredity my brain you know or my heredity my body's heredity and then what my brain has has received from my, the culture as I was growing up my my heredity uh, interacts. Uh, with with my cultural learning, and then a body mind is developed. You know, the brain's learning from the culture and the heredity from previous from from my parents, and you know, interact with each other, and then create a virtual reality. You know, which which seems pretty real, but it's it's like a dream. But that seems pretty pretty real. And then you see a world out there and you believe this and you believe that. And, you know, all, almost everybody has the same religious beliefs as what they grew up in with their culture, you know. Uh, uh, so, and, and the Course explains this too, you know, how, how we made our father. We, 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 <laughs> we, we actually made our father what we wanted to be our father. We wanted this world to be our father, you know, in our culture. I don't know if, if you really got, got into this part of the course, but it's in there. We, we made our own father so then we can live what, like we want to live. And so, but anyway, that's the body mind. And uh, the miracle, the miracle is, is, <laughs> is when you exchange your body mind for the mind of Christ. The body mind is the person. And the person is just, the person is just, I mean, the, the person is, it's just their heredity interacting with their cultural or their brain's cultural learning. You know, that's that's what the person is. Um, uh, my wife, you know, she was raised. She was raised in the church, and they went. She went to church with her parents, and and um, she's. We went to church our whole fifty years of marriage, and 
and a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person in the world. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful. I can't believe that after, it's almost impossible to believe. She's more beautiful after being married 50 years than she was the day I married her. This is a beautiful woman. If you want to go to my Facebook and see pictures of her, you know, there's plenty on there. Just go to Richard Lodi Facebook and beautiful family. Every every person in her family, grand, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, they're all intelligent. They're all nice-looking. Um, no, I don't think anyone's ever been on drugs or alcohol or anything like that. It's just a wonderful family, and a lot of and a lot of this has to do with the way she raised the kids. And uh, what's ironic about it is that none of our kids are religious. Um, uh, the the my daughter, our daughter and uh, oldest son. Now they probably haven't been to church in years, you know. But but they're just successful in in their lives and careers, and and um, uh, it it's just amazing. And my youngest son, he uh, he turned Catholic so he could take communion with his wife. And they have three kids they're raising as Catholics. And one time I, one time I heard, I heard him say to his wife, <laughs> this was kind of funny, but she accepted. It was this, this fish on, for Lent. I guess they don't eat fish on Fridays and stuff and, and during Lent or whatever. And then he says they were going to go to this restaurant, I guess, where, where they really didn't serve fish or whatever. I don't know. But on the way in, he says, now, just how anal are we going to be be about this today, this eating fish? So he goes along with whatever she wants, and uh, that that's the happy, that's the, that's the life. If he can do that, you know, that's fine. And... Uh, uh, but but uh, they, they, these religions they sure got they sure got a lot of, of a lot of hindrances in them with them you know like what difference does it make what you eat I mean as long as it's good healthy food you know and it isn't potato chips and candy bars all the time nothing wrong with potato chips and candy bars once in a while you know. Li- live your life but but be careful but i just love my kids i love the way they think and and, and uh but they don't think I, you know like i come completely right but i guess i we all have to learn through that but uh it, it's just a wonderful life that that's the miracle that's the miracle that's the miraculous life um and uh it's you know when I still bought those books in A Course in Miracles, I didn't have any idea what they really what the Course in Miracles was. I don't think I ever heard of A Course in Miracles before. But that same book, that same set of three books, was on the shelf in the same place a year later at one third the price, and that's when I bought it, and that's how I got into into the Course in Miracles. Now that's kind of a Maybe a miracle in itself too. You know, I'm not sure about that, but um, but uh, it. Um, but you wanted to, you wanted me to talk about the book, but that's what the book is. It's it's a leading. It's a leading, just as the first fifty lessons in the course. But I inc- incorporate the whole course into those first fifty lessons. And here, here's a mistake that Helen, you know, the, the originator or the Helen, I, I have problems pronouncing names that I'm not familiar with, but we know who we're talking about. Uh, Helen Schuckler or Schuckler or something Schuckler, like that. I think. Yeah, it's kind of like your name, my last name. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. 
you know, I like Guanaco. That's that, that that's enough for me. And Helen, you know, it's enough for me too. But but Helen, in one of her comments, I believe I remember reading that uh, she thought that of, of the Course in Miracles, the first fifty lessons were kind of a waste. I believe I remember reading that 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 was one one thing that she said. You know, she was given the course, and if she still thought after her whole course was completed that the first fifty lessons were kind of a waste, wow. That means that whole course was given to her and she really didn't understand it because the whole course is in the first 50 lessons. Boy, I mean, I believe that the people that were given the course probably even at the time of their death you know, didn't really understand it very thoroughly. And I know when I uh, when I uh, listen to some of the videos of, of um, Ken, Ken uh, Wapnick, when I listen to some of his videos, you know, I'm really not sure that the people that were given the course and and dedicated to it really understood it really thoroughly. Um, I know Helen had a lot of psychological problems, even though she was a, a, a psychiatrist, a medical psychiatrist. Um, re- reading about her obsession with shoes, <laughs> and then Ken Wapnick, he would walk. He would walk with her during her obsession with shoes, and they would go to like I don't know a whole bunch of shoe stores, and and uh, I mean they they had they had some weird weird things, even though the course was given to them. So and I like I like it that the course was given to Helen, who was an atheist. That way, or at least an agnostic, some readings she calls herself an atheist, other times I think a, a, an agnostic, but uh, the Course could have only come through someone like that. And of course, Ken, he was a Buddhist when he began uh, reading the Course. He was going to go into the the, the monastery and instead he got involved in the Course in Miracles. So so neither one were Christians. And it, the Course couldn't have come through Christians because it's too different. It's too real. Christians are too... They're, they were too into their religion. They couldn't, uh, couldn't have accepted the Course in Miracles like an atheist or a Buddhist you know, could have accepted it. So, so the uni- what I call the universal life for God, in my book I call it the universal life. In other books, you know, I, I call I call it a lot of different things. I call it the Christ, you know, Jesus. But uh, uh, but it came through who it could come through, and uh, that's where I'm at with this. Uh, Life is but a dream, a pathway into the miraculous. It's coming through me. And uh, there probably aren't too many vehicles that it could come through the way it comes through me. And that's all I am as a vehicle. I'm really happy to be the vehicle. Oh, my gosh, it's so happy. I'm so happy because uh, all the all the happiness is coming through as it coming through me. Boy, I, I experience it, it. and uh, uh, it's just a wonderful life. You know, I think everybody could hate me if they wanted to, 
and I would still be happy. I really do. I have everything in this world. I have it all. But I think it could be taken away, and I'd still be happy. Um, I don't get my happiness from it, but, but I enjoy it. I have everything could be gone tomorrow, but I enjoy it now. That's the only time, you know, you really have is now, and I enjoy it now. If it's there tomorrow, it's there tomorrow. I have no reason to believe it won't be. It's been there for years now, and it just keeps getting better. Um it's the it's this is paradise. This is paradise. I don't um the course in miracles, you know, but it's it's gotta be pretty close. I gotta be pretty close to the real world. I hope this is my last lifetime. I mean, I'm not really crazy about coming back in another dream, you know, being a baby again and Living through all that, uh, I mean, lost some childhoods are pretty nice, but uh, and my life is pretty nice. Actually, actually, this is pretty close to heaven. I mean, this has got to be pretty close. I'm so happy, and uh, yeah, but uh, after the real world comes heaven, right? Pardon when you are in the real world shortly after god lifts you into heaven that that's what it is uh, if if i was in the real world i wouldn't be here you know i wouldn't be here you wouldn't you wouldn't see my body but i think what happens well, the in a course in miracles that it is and there is the spots where it says that there are those who have are already in heaven and can appear to us and help us. So there are um, available to us. It's not like they can't. You can't. When you're in heaven, you can't be of service. You can't. Yeah, you know. I think. I think. Like like we religions. Um. Uh. I. I think. The, the way I the way I understand it is like I, I have I'm you as you know you've probably read my on my Facebook you know and and in in our in our different groups you know that that uh, I have the uh, the Course in Miracles that's a small build building with with books from various religions and the Course in Miracles and things like that. And I have I have an angel that's in the window, and I have uh, Christmas lights around this angel. It, it's a uh, it's just um, it's it's on the top of a of a well it's an angel in the window and it's kind of lit up and I kind of represents the truth center. And uh, uh, for us in the world, for us in the world. We don't understand spirit. We don't understand. We don't understand. <laughs> you see, we people think there's devils and angels and 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 uh, spiritual guides and uh, um, well, there's all kinds of helpers, and uh, that's the only way. It can be understood by the human mind for a lot of people. So I have an angel in the window. And the Bible talks about angels, and religious books talk about angels. But there's really only God. Yeah, when when symbols. when you're when you're pardon it's when more you're like being symbols hit, or parables of of what is right so that, that, can that, be that perceived within the dream that that's that's the way that's the way it is um 
we perceive our help as angels. We perceive our help as spiritual guides. We experience our help as um, uh, a voice from within. Voice within. There's all kinds of ways that we can experience God, but they're just manifestations of God that we can understand because of the mental level that we're at. So there's people, they need spiritual guides. Um, Gary, uh, Gary, what's his name? Gary Renard. Have you read The Disappearance of the Universe? It's, I read it's a really... part of it. Pardon? I haven't finished it yet. I've started Oh. Yeah, yeah, I, I I read that book when I was uh, getting st started in into the Course in Miracles, and uh, uh, it it well, parts of it were very 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 helpful to me, and then there were other parts, you know, that that were just plain weird, but uh, but. Gary had these two spirits visit him in material form. You know, they'd be sitting on his couch, you know, one day, and, and he was talking and he was learning a lot from them. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I really believe him, but, you know, he made a lot of money off of that. But what what the basic idea here is that that was probably how he could experience. That was probably his guides. You know, not that they really existed that way, but they existed that way for him. I don't have any guides other than other than the Course in Miracles and uh, the Universal Mind or the Holy Spirit. Could call it the Holy Spirit, the Universal Mind. See, what we do is we give things names and then we argue about who is right. And uh, that's part of the foolishness of, in the dream. Um, just, because, just because one person says howdyos and the other person says goodbye, I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah. And uh, if you call an... <laughs> If you call a piece of fruit an apple or or you call it uh, by a different name, you know, it's the same thing. But in religions, you can have, especially Christianity, you know, we, here in my hometown, we have, we have three churches on the same corner, three different denominations on the same corner. And we got another church about five blocks and down in one direction and another one three down in the next direction and uh you know they could just as well be one but they can't get along because they got a little bit of different beliefs and and uh it's all part of the foolishness but the foolishness is disappearing because two of those churches are closed now you can't keep this foolishness up I mean, you got to get your act together and realize, hey, it, this God is one. It isn't, it isn't this little church and that little church, and it isn't this religion and that religion. But the Course in Miracles, I really love that one. The Course in Miracles, it's not a religion, of course. You know, it's it's a study course, personal study course, and uh, but but it it. Yeah, it, it includes a lot of things, you know. You, I call this dreaming. I, I don't call it reincarnation, but I think it's like reincarnation. I think, I think when, when the spirit leaves, when the body dies, of course, like the Course says, the body never lived. It's, it's never really lived. It's moving around and everything, but it's not really alive. It's just, it's just a vehicle. And uh, um, it's kind of like it's kind of like a space suit. You know, if you go to the moon, you have to live in your space suit. You know, you can't get out of your space suit. So then you kind of figure your space suit is part of who you are, when it isn't a part of who you are at all. It's just a suit. And uh, 
uh, we're we're in this we're spirits in this other environment, like we were on a moon or something. So I'm living in this spacesuit, you know, my body, and um, uh, so so I have to take care of it and you know keep it clean and and uh, <laughs> brush its teeth and I do a pretty good job of it. I'm staying. I'm keeping it. I'm pe- keeping it pretty functional. Well, like I like I say in my book, it's a it, it's a virtual reality machine, and I do my best to keep it fine tuned. And I I've got that in the book too. Keep keep your virtual reality machine fine tuned. I mean, don't don't mess around with it. I mean, eat a healthy diet. I mean, read a little bit. You know about about mental health. Read a little bit. Um, mo- most of the people I know know very little about what they should eat. They just go to the doctor, and they're on all kinds of medications. I take no medication at all, none at all. And uh, well, once in a while I'll take an aspirin. You know, if I get a headache or something. I'll 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 take an aspirin and it isn't an aspirin though I guess it's like a Tylenol I don't know my wife's got them in the cabinet but but I figure you know but but the thing is when I do have a pain like a headache don't just take that aspirin uh, think about why I have a headache you know what am I doing that might be responsible for this headache. And um, uh, maybe change that. Maybe I'm not getting enough sleep or maybe uh, one thing or another. Don't just keep taking that those aspirins because uh, those aspirins aren't curing anything. They're just kind of covering up something that's a cause. And uh, that's in the Course in Miracles too. Uh, this medication is the magic. You aren't really, you aren't really getting any better. Uh, it calls yeah, it, it mad. Yeah. Pardon. It, it says it says to to do the thing. It, it offers things in a way that doesn't scare you, so that keeps you going. So yeah. If mag- yeah. If you need magic to keep going, because it would scare you more not to have it, you should take it. And you should right, follow, right. You should that's, follow that's, the advice of doctors because it's not it's not if that's your path, right? You, well, that, you that, need to do you need to go the way that works. That's exactly yeah, that's and, exactly right. It's We're, not because it's the salvation lies within the ways of the world. It's because what the way of salvation is one of joy, of love, and of safety. Yeah, you know, I, that, you know, I call this podcast the Holy Spirit's curriculum of joy because that's important yeah. to me. I'm not. I hope I'm not. You know, I hope I'm not saying that wrong. I'm not discouraging anybody from going to the doctor. Like I, when uh, I've had a couple of things, when uh, oh, I don't remember now even what they were, but something's happened and. Boy, I go to the emergency room, you know, immediately yeah. because with, within this world, you know, within this world, um, um, it, it's, it, it, it's, got, it's, 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 this, <laughs> it's really, it's hard to explain. Yeah, but go to your doctors if you're, you know, yeah, find say, out what you need to do and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, yeah, but it do isn't. Do what the world needs you to do. And change your mind about it. Yeah, it, it, it just because it isn't real, it's real. It's real to us in the dream, you know. So yes. So we have to do it. I mean, when you have a dream illness, you look for a dream doctor, right, to help you with it. I mean, mm-hmm. you're you're in a dream. When 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 I'm in bed at night and I have a dream, I'm I I don't realize that it's all in my mind. I mean, in my dream, things can be very real. You know, I I I uh, I'm talking about a real a dream when I'm in bed dreaming. You know, in my bedroom, 
laying next to my wife. That's the dream I'm talking about now. But when I'm in that dream, it's not really me in that dream because it's in my mind. Everything's in my mind in that dream. But uh, it seems very real. If I get sick in that dream, I'm going to look for a dream doctor. Or if I'm lost in the dream city that I'm dreaming, I'm, I can't just get out of that. I have to look for a guide in the dream to get me out of it. So, yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, I'm or not the therapist just, or whatever, yeah. yeah you go I'm where not, you get the help you need, right? Right, right. You, you need to do that at, while at the same time trying to realize, hey, it, it is all in dreaming. It is all in dreaming. Um, if if you're doing it if you're doing it right, you know I don't think you're gonna have a lot of need for doctors and stuff. But but if you do, like when I have a headache, I'm gonna take an aspirin. Why should I suffer? But I'm not just gonna take keep taking an aspirin every morning if I got a headache. I'm going to search for the reason that I have this headache. You know, some people think the Course in Miracles <clears throat> teaches that. Uh, for instance, uh, one one of the lessons says, uh, if I, I might not get it exactly right, but it's one of the middle lessons where it says uh, that uh, il illness uh, illness is is a is a um, It's a defense illness, against the truth. Yeah, is uh, would you say that again? Illness is a defense against the yeah. truth, or sickness illness is a defense it, against it, the it, truth. It, right, illness is a defense against the truth, and uh, uh, a lot of people take that as if you if you know the truth, you'll never have an illness, and yet have both then hell you, and and Ken died of terrible illnesses. Yes. You know, so... so it, uh, it, it's, a, it's basically about the mind, right? Because according to A Course in Miracles, any any distortion or anything is, is a thing of the mind. Yes. Yeah. So it's not yeah. talking about physical conditions or stuff, even though that's included in the mind, right? Because well, it's a thing of the mind, but it's not... It's not only, it's not about separating physical illness from mental illness. Yeah. It's about, it's, I about, don't... it's about going to the cause, the level of cause, which is in the mind. And that's yes. where you need to change your mind about things for. Yes. I do okay. not have that quite figured out exactly yet when it comes to that, because, because I know... I, 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 if I'm doing, if my mind is right, if my mind is right, see, now, now here I'm thinking myself, I, I want to make a distinction here. Until now, it's been the Holy Spirit speaking through me. You know, it's just been the Holy Spirit speaking through me. And I know this. But now, now, my mind is getting involved here. Yes. Because there's something here that's not quite clicking. Because when, when, people, when people get ill, like when, like, uh, when, when I, for instance, when I get my headache, and it's very rare, but I mean, it, if I get well, I take take an aspirin or Tylenol or whatever. But I don't just take that pill and say, well, it's just part of the world, you know, and that's what happens when you get older, or whatever that type of thing. I, I I look for the cause in my life. You know, why do I have this headache? And I try to go back to that cause 
and figure it out. But I'll take that aspirin while I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, so, so I don't quite have this because understanding, because I do believe that the Course is teaching just what it says there, that your illness is a defense against the truth. Yeah. Uh, you know, a person a person might just keep taking aspirins, you know, their whole life. I know people that have aches and pains, and then they'll take, like, some kind of medication for it their whole life without ever trying to figure out what might be causing those aches and pains and go into the cause. For instance, for instance, somebody that has a lot of aches and pains, it might be because they're really resenting somebody in their life. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, so you could be so, taking that. Richard? Yep. We need to wrap up now. So if you would like to make some final points, please do. Well, the thing is, the thing is, uh, I don't quite have this, I don't quite have it all figured out as far as illness and stuff like that. But everything else that I've talked about has come through the Holy Spirit. And I'm certainly not saying don't go to doctors um, um, because, I mean, if you don't have it right, right it, because illness, like the Course said, the illness is a defense against the truth. You know, that's probably all our illnesses. You know, if we if we were completely living in the truth, maybe we wouldn't have any illnesses. I think that's probably what the Course. But we're but but a lot of times we don't want to admit the cause. We would rather we don't want to admit. You know, well we're resenting somebody, and that's why we have arthritis or whatever. We all, but but I don't know much about that. I just know I know that I'm happy if I have an ache or pain. I'm not just going to want to take medication all my life, which is magic to get rid of the pain. I want to, you know, try to find what the cause might be, and probably exercise a little more, or eat a little different. I don't know. Try to figure it out. But uh, live live happy. Realize you aren't perfect. You never, you might get pretty close and then you'll go into the real world. I don't know, Christ, when he was hanging on the cross, he said to the thief, you know, on one side, he says, today you will be with me in paradise. Um, I really feel like I'm living in paradise. I really do. And it's all due to, to, to thinking the way the Course in Miracles is telling me to think and and it does say, you know, it does say that illness is a defense against the truth. So yes, it, does. it does say that. So I don't want to just say, well, I'm getting old. So, you know, this happens and that happens because I'm getting old. Yeah, I Maybe actually was yeah. reading in a book, a, a psychology book, where where the it's all about memory or remembering and how many people think that that one gets worse at remembering as one grows older and he said it's that thought that causes it not the the growing older because kids forget things too like they leave their pencil in school or a pencil case or this or that right and nobody says they're losing their memory yeah, yeah, we got it. So, I've, I've so got a lot to learn. Psychologically speaking, you you cannot put age as the cause, right? Of of that. I I I uh, I'm I'm really. So it's what you're thinking is really really important. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too because I feel like I'm about. 27 years old. I mean, I just feel very, I just feel very young. I just feel very young. Um, uh, I do have gray hair, you know, uh, but I, I just feel very young. I just can't believe it when I, that, that I've been in the world this long. 
my wife looks very young um but i i don't know i don't quite have that all together yet but i do believe that we age faster when we believe that we're going to be aging you yeah. know i believe believe a lot of these problems that the aging people have come because they believe that those things are going to come so then of course they come you know you're believing that that you're going to have this illness and that illness because, well, that's what happens when, for instance, people can't believe anybody can live to be over 110, you know, because that's the maximum, they think. I don't know. I think people can live very long past that if if they're thinking right. I mean, I'm not sure if... If if you're thinking exactly the way the Lord wants you to think or God wants you to think, I'm not sure you're going to be aging at all. You might have it, it talks about in, in in Bible and some religions where where people have lived a hundreds hundreds of years, and uh, I don't know. But anyway, that's yeah. that's just something I'm working on right now. I. I can't tell you anything for sure, but but up until we started talking about that, it all came you know, from the Holy Spirit right through me. But but this part about well, this maybe part the about, listeners will will figure out something and come back to us with it. I hope that that I hope so. I hope so because I do believe that a lot of this illness, most of the illness, I think is. It results from psychological things such as such as resentment, uh, fear, um, worry, uh, worry. A lot of these things, you know, cause a lot of the physical illnesses. Whereas if we just lived, you know, from the Holy Spirit, I think if if uh, if you know the curriculum of joy, you know, from the Holy Spirit, you're probably going to live a very healthy and probably long life. But uh, a lot of things go with that, I think, because you want to eat right and live right and, you know, have fun and enjoyment and relax and just have, have, have a good paradise here. So there's one thing I missed that's very important. You're never going to die and go to heaven unless you have it here to take with you. You know, you take heaven with you when you die. If you don't have it here, you don't take it with you. I mean, you're not going to have a lousy life, hateful, rotten, bitter life here, and then when you die, go to heaven because you believed in something. I mean... You're going to take with you, you know, what you have here. So, so don't 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 expect when you die, then you're going to go someplace where everything's wonderful. Although it's not wonderful here, it'll be wonderful there. No, no, no. If you don't have that curriculum of joy here, if you don't have a joyful heart here, if you don't have a loving heart here. Um, if you don't have that to take with you, you're really fooling yourself if you think you're going to have anything wonderful after the body dies. I, I like um, that point, Richard. A really good point because because when you go, change places or change job or change partners or this and that, you are always taking yourself along, whatever you're th- believing is true. Definitely, and, 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 and that's, that's an that's, experience we can take from life, right? So yes, and yes. the only the only way if you're going to leave one woman, you know, divorce one woman and marry another one, you're taking yourself with you. It may be, you know, that you learned something enough in the first marriage that you take a different self into the second marriage. But if you take the same self into that second marriage, that second marriage isn't going to work. Or yeah. or that second job. I mean, you're always taking yourself with you. Exactly. doesn't help to change jobs. 
unless you've changed yourself, you know, too. Yeah. It's all it's all the mind. Yes. So I mean I think that's I mean, a I'm good end live, note. Okay. We'll take that as an end note. Thank you so much. You yeah, know Thank you, I, Richard. I, one last thing where can people get a hold of you and your books if they want to oh okay the best place is um well i don't i don't have the, my mine on my website yet but i would just say go to amazon that that's really simple you know everybody knows how to get to amazon just type in my name richard dale Lodi, and my books will come up but uh, the new one might not pop right up. So, so just type in the Amazon where it says search. Just type in uh, uh, life is but a dream. And there's a lot of books similar with that similar title. But if you type in life is but a dream and then Richard Lodi behind it, my book will pop up. And I have about 30 of them. So there's a lot of books. But... None of them, none of them are like this one. This one here is, this one here, I, I have it as an e-book too. It's on Kindle, Amazon Kindle. It's it's an e-book. And I believe, you know, it's going to pass the test. And maybe a month from now, it'll be an audio book as well. Uh, Great. It's, it's not easy to get an audio book out. It's not easy. I've worked at it a long time, so so um, I'm just hoping it'll pass all the tests. Great. Yeah. Okay, but, but Richard. Just, yeah, yep, just Thank type you in so Richard much Dale, Lodi. for Pardon? taking the time to speak with me and to share this with everyone who is listening, who will listen, and so on. Yeah. Oh, you Thank might want to so tell. Much. You might want to tell everybody in closing uh, where I was at when we started. It was one thirty a.m., and now it's now it's uh, quarter after three, I believe. So, so I'm up here in the middle of the night while you guys are in prime time over there. But I love it. I love it. Yeah. So thank you so much. Oh, right. thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it as well. And mm -hmm. yeah, till next time. Bye bye. Oh, uh, goodbye, Juanico. Love you, man. Love you too.